innovation strategy. Why do we need an innovation strategy? Well, as we've seen, innovation is creating value from ideas. Great. But if we don't know where we're going, there's a good chance we'll end up somewhere else. So the challenge also is having a clear, focused direction for our innovation activity. That's also important because even the largest organisation doesn't have infinite resources. We can't do everything, resources are limited. In a startup, they only get one shot. But for any organisation, it's really important to be clear where we're going, what we're doing and why. And there's another reason why it's important to have an innovation strategy. Basically, it's all about learning. Organisations have the chance to learn and grow through what they know. From the first startup, learning some new tricks that you can apply next time around, through to giant corporations who are continually reusing their knowledge. So, there are at least three elements of this learning that are strategic and need strategic management. The first is growing our knowledge base, building our competences, the things we can use to make something happen. An organisation like 3M has been around 100 years, not by accident. It draws on a deep knowledge base. It understands hugely about coating surfaces. From the early days of sandpaper, where little pieces of grit were coated on paper, through magnetic oxide coated onto uh, computer tapes and audio tapes, through to today's nanoparticles. Much of what 3M is able to do draws on a deep knowledge base. And strategically managing the accumulation and working with that base is a key task. But it's also about capabilities. As we've seen, innovation doesn't happen by accident. We need patterns of behaviour. We need to construct the way an organisation works so it can repeat the trick. And learning and building these capabilities is another key part of innovation strategy. But there's also the ability to step back and reset, to cope with different conditions, to extend and develop our capabilities, sometimes to revise them entirely. When we enter new markets, perhaps go to a new geographical area, when we take on board new technologies in a completely different field, when we launch completely new ventures, when we change the organisation, all of these are extending and developing our capabilities. So there's a great deal of innovation strategy that has to do with strategic learning. So what's in an innovation strategy if it's so important? Well, there's a number of components. The first thing, of course, is we need a vision. We need to know where we're going and we need to build commitment in the organisation to get there. That's particularly true in the case of a startup. We also need some degree of analysis. Of all the things we might do, just which ones are going to be important? We need then some selection from all those things we might do, which ones are we going to do and why? We also need to think strategically about whether we're going to be able to make this actually happen. Can we see this through? There's something about the style, the position or the posture we take in taking our strategy forward. And there's something else about making sure that other people come with us, getting the strategy deployed and getting buy-in and support for that strategy. So, let's look at these very briefly. The vision thing. Well, yes, of course we need to know where we're going, but the evidence is clear. Innovation strategy needs a clear, compelling and motivating vision, and one which will stretch the organisation, take it further. It needs a clear mission, a sense of specific purpose, a key target. It needs to build on who we are, relate to the values of the organisation, what we believe in and the behaviours we want to follow. There needs to be alignment in making sure that vision does engage and compel people. And there are plenty of examples. Famous one, of course, was John Kennedy's challenge to the United States. We are going to put a man on the moon and bring him home safely. That's a huge innovation challenge, very focused, compelling mission for an innovation strategy. But Lockheed Skunk Works, way back in the Second World War, began life. It still is a key part of the Lockheed organization, essentially the part of the organization which is characterized by very high performing teams achieving what might seem impossible to others. Enormously stretching, compelling visions that 
challenge the organisation or the teams to deliver. What about strategic analysis? Well, innovation is all about the future. So we need to make use of tools to explore that future inside the organisation and outside and put this information together. The good news is we have many different powerful tools to help us. For example, something called PEST, political, economic, social technology. What are the drivers in the kind of world we're moving into that we might need to respond to? Now, they could be threats or they could be opportunities. So another powerful tool to use alongside PEST is SWOT, strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. How do we build on our strengths? How do we develop and worry about our weaknesses so that we're in a position to respond effectively to those potential drivers in the world outside? And particularly, how we might pick up opportunities. Another, start, another tool which is enormously powerful, Michael Porter, an American industrial economist, basically distilled much of what we know about competitive behavior, in which innovation plays a key part, into five forces. The competitive rivalry between firms is partly shaped by the relative power of suppliers and of customers and the possibility of new entrants and the possibility or the entry barriers to substitutes. Now that set of five things to consider gives us quite a powerful strategic roadmap for thinking about where we might play in the future and how we might use innovation to create opportunity. We might find ourselves looking for blue oceans a metaphor here, very much developed by a couple of professors from the INSEAD Business School. The Blue Ocean takes its idea from the situation if you imagine throwing a piece of meat into a shark-infested sea. Very, very quickly, all the sharks gather, they scrabble trying to get at the meat. Very quickly, the water is running red with blood. It's a violent, difficult place to compete. By contrast, a Blue Ocean has nothing going on. It's completely clear and clean, full of opportunity. And the notion of a blue ocean strategy is to use different tools to think about where we are and what's coming to find blue oceans rather than try and struggle to compete in red oceans. Now many of those are tools that are about looking outside and bringing messages in. The reverse is equally true. Something called the resource-based view essentially says, what do we know and how could we deploy it? So if we're 3M, back to that example, we know about coating surfaces, how could we deploy that in all sorts of interesting and new markets? Now, all of these strategic analysis tools, and there are many others, identify a set of possibilities. That still poses a big question, how do we choose? How do we decide where we're going to get advantage from innovation? and particularly how we prioritise the things we can do because we can't do everything. So the idea particularly, apart from a startup where there is only one strategy, one choice, the one big new venture idea, but as we move to organisations which are growing, so we need to think about a portfolio, one which balances the risks and the rewards, one which allows us to do both do better incremental innovation and more radical, exploratory innovation, do different, and balancing the two. And what we're trying also to do is not just invest in things that bring immediate benefits, immediate rewards, but also building our capability and competence for the long term. We may choose to do something which in itself doesn't get us very far, except it builds a foundation for the future. We've also got to think in our strategy for innovation about whether we can actually do this. Can we make it happen? Have we got the capabilities? If not, do we know where they might come from? So much of innovation strategy isn't about a master plan which we create and then hope will come true, but rather being agile, planning but then adapting in agile fashion. Again, a cornerstone of the lean startup approach, the idea that we have an idea, we test it, and we pivot. We adapt around the feedback we get from the world outside, from the market, from other changing situations. And this principle of agile strategy is a key one. It also raises the question in implementation of how we're actually going to affect our strategy. What's the style we're going to adopt? If we're going to be a first mover, exploiting some new technological opportunity, then we need some quite deep pockets 
to fund the kind of research and development that allows us to be a first mover. Equally, if we're going to be a fast follower, if we're going to imitate and improve, that's fine, but we need the capacity to find out quickly, to sense what's going on, and then react and move fast. And we also need to think in implementation downstream. How will we get other people to buy into the strategy? How can we break down our overall big target into where we're going? Toyota, as we've already mentioned, is an organization which specializes in getting many, many ideas from its employees, millions of them every year. But if those millions of ideas are shooting off in random directions, this doesn't necessarily help the organization move forward. One of the keys to Toyota's success is strategy deployment, having key strategic objectives which then shape the work that employees do to create ideas to provide a whole stream of innovations, but they fit, they're aligned with that overall strategy. So, let's summarize where we've been in this overview of innovation strategy. First of all, strategy matters. We need a framework to guide the commitment of our scarce resources. We have to have a clear sense of direction, a roadmap for the future. It's based around having a clear vision, a focused, clear mission, and something which is consistent with our values, what we believe in, the way we would like to behave. It needs powerful analysis. It's exploring thoroughly the future and where we might play. That raises the question of selection because we can't do everything. And strategic selection is about building a balanced portfolio. And we need to think hard about implementation. How are we actually going to carry forward our strategy into the future? Over the long term, it's also a huge strategic task to think about building the knowledge base, our competence, and building our capabilities to work with those to create value from that knowledge base.